All right, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning in the first verse. The Bible says, our Lord speaking, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up by some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they not, know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they, what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Yeah. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Let's pray. <coughs> Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for another day. God, we thank you for your people that meet here at Dover faithfully week after week. We pray that we might be a testimony in this place. God, we pray that you would bless your word this morning, that you would give it to the hearts of the hearers. Lord, that we draw, that you draw ourselves closer unto you. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, some fairly familiar verses of Scripture, I have sometimes seen it taken out of text and not necessarily gone by what is being said, uh, but the, the understanding is fairly simple. Now, uh, anytime you look at any place in the Word of God, it's important to know who is speaking and whom that person is speaking to. Because without that, sometimes we lose the message, and that is how verses are taken out of context and twisted and turned to mean things, in fact, that they really don't. So obviously, if you have a red-letter edition Bible, first of all, the speaker is the Lord Jesus Christ. And any time you hear the Lord Jesus Christ speak in his recorded word, it's enough that we ought to pick an extra measure of interest to hear what the Lord has to say. Now, the second piece is who is Jesus addressing? Whom is he talking to? Now, to get that fully, we need to go back to chapter 9. And you know the chapter and the verses in your King James Bible are just split that way for our ability to study. But when John wrote this, it was one long thing, one long history of the ministry of Christ the way that he remembered it and looked back on it. So going a little further back, we'll say verse 36, it says, He, meaning Christ, answered and said, Who is the Lord that I might believe on him? And, and Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and he is that talketh to thee. And so I want you to see these were some Jews that questioned whom Christ is. That's who he's addressing through this whole dialogue is people that doubt even who he is. And that still goes on today. Uh, suppose Jehovah's Witness, Russell-like people, Charles Taz Russell and his group, they will tell you Christ was not God. And that's not true. Now, uh, the Jews really believe the very same thing and they still believe it today. They do not recognize whom Christ was. They do not recognize Christ's ministry in any way and that's whom uh, 
Jesus is addressing. Now, in addition to being Jews, they were not believers in Christ. Now, every person that's not saved under the sound of my voice could be put in this category because they do not know Christ. And, and so, reading on in verse 38, and he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment came I unto this world, that they which see not might see. Now he begins to kind of explain to this newly saved individual, I came here to blind the Jews and open the eyes of the Gentiles. That's an amazing ministry in of itself. When you think of all that Christ accomplished and the amazing, the fulfillment of prophecy and, and the special uh, sinless sacrifice, all the ministry that he came to accomplish and he too came to accomplish to turn to the Gentile people. That, that's an amazing, wonderful truth. And had it not happened, uh, you and I would have no hope. Uh, none whatsoever. And so he explains this to the new convert. For this judgment I came, un I came unto this world that they which see not might see and they which see might be made blind. Now, don't ever uh, get the uh, idea that the Jews uh deliberately turned their face against Christ. It was part of God's plan. Sure. Um, uh, they had abused and neglected him, and so he turned his back on them. Uh, but, you know, I've often heard in my ministry where the Jewish people are the hardest to be saved. Well, I'm kind of contrary to that opinion. First of all, nobody's going to be saved uh, unless Jesus saved, uh, changes your wanter. And when he changes your attitude and when he changes your desires, then you'll desire Christ in whom you didn't desire before. But on top of that, uh, I think the tragedy of the Jews is they had all the knowledge right before their feet and did nothing. Uh, but when you think about people reared in church and, and brought up under the nurture and the admonition of the Lord and they never see the goodness of Christ, it's the very same thing. So he he lets uh, this person know, this new convert, that he came to minister unto the Gentile. Verse 40, and some of the Pharisees, this was the, who he will be addressing, and some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, are we blind also? Uh, and the answer was a big yes. You know, early in my ministry, it, it, it was heartbreaking and frustrating to me when you preach to those that are lost and you see that blank scale response. Well, that's not my ministry, that's Christ. My ministry is per, to preach the word. Uh, opening the blinded eyes is something that I can't do and belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, nor will I try to do because it belongs wholly unto him. And, and so this, this question that this Jew come up with, uh, you see a little bit soul's concern that, hey, I could be blind too. I may have missed the boat. I may not see this like it ought to be seen. You know, when someone gets like that, there's a little glimmer of hope, isn't it? Uh, when somebody begins to say, hey, I don't know it all. Hey, you know what? Uh, I, I may not have what I think I have. That, that's a good, good thing. And we see this Jew says that. Now, all the rest of this uh, context is addressed to the Jew. Because remember, that's who he's speaking to. He said, am I blind also? Verse 41, and Jesus said unto him, if you were blind, you should have no sin. And we know we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, but so certainly we are all blinded at least once in our life. If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we sin, therefore your sin remaineth. Now, the only difference between me and the lost 
cross is that Jesus saved me and my sin no longer remains. See, the lost, their sin is ever with them and ever will be with them and will go into hell with them and it will always be. Their sin is never forgiven. It, it is their curse. It is who they are. And uh, unless Jesus intervenes, there will never be any... You'll never be uh, released from that. It will always be with you. And so as Jesus is talking to this Jewish man, he reminds him of that. Now to our text, still addressing this same person, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but cometh up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Now, <laughs> I want you to see that the person he was addressing as a Jew, he's saying, you must go through me. And he was also saying this, everyone prior to me that claimed to be Christ, and there were people that did that, were lying. I am the sheep. I am the door. I am the way. No one else can come any way. Now, as we think about that, think about all in your lifetime. Uh, uh, Baptist people don't mention this a lot, but some of the terms we need to know so we can address these people. Uh, the Catholics, their, their pope is... <coughs> Their Pope is what is called the Vicar of Christ. That means the living Christ. That means that he is standing in Christ's stead. You know what the Bible says that is? That's blasphemy. That, that, that is something that compares us to the person of the Lord God. That is wrong. There's nothing to that. You know, going that way <laughs> it, it, it is the thief and the robber. So we see that as Jesus is uh, ministering unto this young Jewish person, he says, anybody that came before me and said their Christ, said they're the door, they are not. Verse 2, but he that entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now we have two, two things that will be the theme of the rest of this, and that is the shepherd and the sheep. Now, the sheep know God's voice. And you don't have to convince them of it. You know, well, that's Jesus talking to you. You, you, you don't have to convince someone that Christ is dealing with who's, who's speaking to them. They, they know his voice according to this text. They recognize it. They, they're able to, uh, to pull it out of a... Uh, out of a full room and knew that and know that Christ is speaking to them. And so as the Lord Jesus is addressing this person, he says, first of all, there are two things. There are shepherd, there is a shepherd and their sheep. You know, a lot of people will have arguments about the parables concerning the goat and the sheep. Listen, the sheep are the redeemed. The goats have never been God's people, nor will they ever be God's people. They're rebellious. They're mean. They seeketh the way uh, that that uh, they. If you've ever raised goats, you know what I'm talking about. They're just mean creatures. Now, on the flip side of that, uh, sheep are gentle, but they're just they're just stupid animals. Uh, the Lord was not complimenting us. When he says, you're my sheep. Sheep, you have to do everything for them. When I was in college at Martin, uh, believe it or not, the, the brain of a sheep and the brain of a human is very, is very similar. And we would have to dissect uh, a sheep brain. And the first thing I noticed on my sheep brain that <clears throat> it had what looked like a stroke there was blood all through inside the tissue, all through the frontal, what we call the frontal lobe of the brain back this way. And I, I went to Miss Barry, my instructor, and says, what is this? It looks like a stroke. And she says, sheep are so stupid, 
that they will get in the line, and so none of the sheep will be wasted because it's very valuable meat, and it's all usable. And they will come up to the post, and the <clears throat> butcher will slam them in the head with a hammer. They'll fall over dead, and the one behind them will step up for the next one. So he was not complimenting us when he says you're sheep. But despite compliments or not, that is our position. And it is a wonderful thing. We hear the voice of the shepherd. Yeah, you ever been in a service and the Holy Spirit moving and, and, and just so filled the house that you that, that you rejoice in the person of the Lord and the other people just seemingly completely unaware? Yeah. Well, they're not hearing it. They're not hearing the voice of the shepherd. Don't stress yourself about that. Uh, that that's in the hands of the Almighty. But uh, I want you to see that we as our Lord's people here are here are the sheep. Verse 3, we find another position. To him the porter openeth. Now he don't open to the sheep. Whom does he open? He opens to the shepherd. Now the porter is the guard, is the door guard. The porter is the one that controls who people are inside. The porter is the one that says, Who are you? Who goes there? They stand at the door and they want to know who's coming in. Now, <clears throat> I personally believe the porter is a type in a, uh, is a type into the Holy Ghost because that's the here and now. That, that's the dispensation that he lives. Verse 4 says, he goes in there, and the shepherd says, come with me. And only the ones that belong to him go out. Now, another thing about a porter in a place where sheep sleep, there's more than one uh, group, there's more than one uh, herd that meet together in that place. That's just a safe place for them to stay. But there might be six or seven herds in one place, and when he calls to them, only the people that belong to that shepherd, only those sheep Amen. are the one that follows. Amen. Now, listen, we're in a mess today in this world. Not just the United States, in the whole world. Listen, there's chaos. But listen, what you're doing is living among other beings. What you're doing is living among people who are not sheep. They do not belong to the Almighty. So don't stress yourself. Just be attentive unto the voice of the Master. Do what He says. Do what He invites you to do. Uh, worship Him. Give Him praise. And that is what we as the Lord's sheep ought to be doing. Verse 4, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. Now, our nature being what it is, you always be sure who has the leadership role. He goes before us, not the other way around. If you get before him, and listen, I've been, uh, as a preacher and a minister of the gospel, I've got it out of whack sometime. And I thought I was in the leadership seat, and it never, ever works out. Stay behind the shepherd. And you know what? The shepherd may walk 10 or 15 feet and stop half the day. And what you have is what little bit of grass is in that little spot. And you know what you need to do? You need to wait there with the shepherd till he moves a few feet further. That, that's a very Amen. difficult thing to do. Yeah. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and He will strengthen your soul. Wait, I say, wait upon the Lord. And it's a very difficult time. Verse 5, And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Now, this means when a false shepherd comes in and says, y'all ready to go? There ought to be no response from us. Now this is the problem sometimes there, there is. Sometimes money comes calling 
and says, hey, come over here. I've got a better job for you. And we were very inclined that way. So we almost want to give it to the Lord. It's his command. But it's not. See, we as the Lord's people, you be certain the, the, the plan that you have in your life belongeth unto the master. That, that, that is what we have to have every day of our life on this journey here below is that certainly that Jesus is the leading element in your life and he will do that. Verse 6, this parable Jesus spake unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Now here's a hallmark of either a lost person or a saved person out of the will of, all, of the Almighty missing the message. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was an Armenian, I never even heard that I can recall of Ephesians 1 ever preached from or Romans chapter 9. What about you? That's kind of skipped over, right? That's kind of, that was kind of left out. But you know what? When I did hear it, it didn't make me mad. It thrilled my soul. It, it, it made me understand that, yes, God is God, and he reigneth over everything, not just over this little temporal world, but he ruleth myself. That, that, that's a thrilling, uh, listen, what kind of comfort is in that? Knowing that, listen, I don't have to stress about it. And so we see, but sometimes we do miss the message. But you know, this is what I'll say. Watch people that miss it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Watch them when they never, ever rings true with them. Now, we're not to judge. We certainly know the scripture teaches that. But me and Donna's talking about that, putting out some fruit trees down there by the pasture. You know what? If I put out an apple tree, what I anticipate getting? Apples. Mm -hmm. Right? In the very same way, if someone says they're regenerate, somewhere, sometime, I'm going to start looking for fruit, meat for repentance. And if it's not there, oh, I'm convinced that they've never been saved to start with. And, and so we see then that just because you hear it don't mean that you possess it. So Jesus goes a little further uh, and, and tries to make it a, a little more clear to them. In verse 7, the Bible says, Then said Jesus unto them again. I'm going to put it a different way. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I am Christ. I am the door. Now, I, I think that's a marvelous thing. In other words, if you're going to get in, you're going to get in through me. No other way, no baptism, no uh, saying the sacrament, no, 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 none of the foolishness that exists today. If you're going to get in, you're going to get in through me. Now, remember, he just referred to the porter. You know, uh, we certainly have to have the porter, don't we? Uh, you know what? I've never seen Christ. I've had people uh, say, well, I saw Jesus last night. And, and you can't help but chuckle a little bit, you know. I, I guess I shouldn't laugh. Uh, I should feel sorry for him. But, you know, I've never seen Christ, but I know who he is. Uh, but you know what? The porter I do know. Because he came to me and said, you need to be redeemed. You're lost and you're on your way to a devil's hell. There's the answer. The porter is the Holy Ghost and he identifies the entrance into heaven. Now, that's what the difference is in us and Armenian people. And Jack Hiles junk that he put out in the 60s and the 70s, it takes away the porter. It makes it logic. You don't want to go to hell, do you? I mean, I never might even met anybody that says, oh yeah, born in hell would be great. I think I'd like to go. No, but made it into something physical. 
And if you've ever been burned, and especially if you've burned, been bad, badly burned, uh, we have no understanding of what hell is really about. But you're not going to get anybody that's enticed by going there. And so we take the porter out of the equation and we say, oh yeah, I want to trust Jesus. I don't want to go to hell. And the porter's not there. See, I think in, in, in 2023, 20, the porter is rarely spoken of. You, you know what will bring revival at New Testament Baptist Church? The porter, the Holy Ghost. Him coming down and moving about in and among his people, that in fact is revival. And, and so we see that Jesus identifies himself, I am the door. Verse 8. All that ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Now again, we find the, the fine-tuned ears of the redeemed, they will not hear the robber. We well, was talking about this the other day. I can't remember whom I was talking to about it. Uh, 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 I, uh, they're not the Church of Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. They're Mormons. They're Smithites. The original leader of that bunch was John Smith, and he led the, he led people uh, into misery. Uh, and you think, how could someone believe that John Smith went into the a cave in the eastern part of the United States and found some tablets in a language no one had ever seen and he understood it perfectly and then he burned the tablets up and no one else ever saw them and you're like, how could somebody be so stupid? Well, they're not sheep. They're not sheep. And second and part of the grace of God, you know, you go up to that full throttle. And that's why, that's why mercy and grace is integral. And, and never pride yourself in truth because what made you a sheep is the goodness of God. <clears throat> Verse 9. I am the door. Right. Not baptism, not church membership. Jesus is the door. You know what? It thrills my heart to see somebody scripturally baptized but listen, it's a million fold when I see someone genuinely saved. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to see, see people unite with the Lord's church. But it's no comparison to being genuinely redeemed, is it? I, I, I'd rather run through the door than be a member of the Lord's church. And I'm not minimizing that. I, I, am, I am blessed beyond all measure to be in one of the Lord's churches. I, I, I am blessed beyond measure to... To, to be an undershirt, but oh, the grace and the mercy that brought redemption. Oh, what a, what a huge difference. And so we see then, as the Lord's people, that we must see that Christ is the door. He is the only answer. He is the only way and the, the Almighty. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, two, two more things I want you to notice. First, uh, it says, if any man come in by me, they shall be saved. I want you to see the part that's not there. No sinner's prayer. No, would you repeat this, please? Just, if you enter in by Christ, you are saved. Simple as that. Easy as that. Just like the, just like the wonderful woman Lydia in Acts chapter 16, whose heart the Lord opened. And Lydia's heart had been locked tight for many years by religion. And it said that the Lord opened her heart. And she, she, she was saved. And so we find in the very, in the very same capacity here he says uh, if you come by Christ you will be saved notice the other promise and find pasture now every one of us know what being hungry is about 
ready for another meal. Have you ever seen those individuals? And I'm thinking of a person right now, and I'm, I'm trying not to say names when we're broadcasting. But I personally know that he's been to every type of church in Stewart County. And you know what? He's still not being fed today. And you know why? He's not found a pasture. In fact, he can't find a pasture. And probably, if the, well, I know if the Lord don't intervene, he never will. And, and, and so, sometimes I'm sure it's a little bit of a discouragement to come to a building that would seat 70 and, and, and find 17. But you know what? The 17 here are people who want to be fed. And despite all the other elaborateness of the other things that go on in Stewart County, you know what? This is where God's people are fed. This is huh, the pasture that he puts his people. Verse 10, the thief cometh not, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. You watch men that ever come in and say, hey, I can double the size of this church. You know what? They probably can't. <laughs> But you don't, want, you don't want that other group that's going to come. You, you be very cautious. The purpose of the devil, still after all these centuries of existence, is to steal the sheep, to kill the sheep, and to destroy the sheep. And you know why? He knows he can't impact your soul. He, he's no dummy. He's theologically set out. So he'll just take your life. He will destroy you. He will kill you physically because he knows that's his only option. And so the, the Lord Jesus warns these people just because you're redeemed. Listen, the devil is still out there. He still wants you. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Now, we won't tarry long on this, but if you're a sheep, you want a good shepherd. Very basic. First of all, the sheep, the shepherd protects the sheep. When that, when that bear comes along, like it did in the days of David, he takes care of the bear. And he takes you to good, a good pasture is what we just read, right? right? Now, uh, you ever get sick of the same old food? Now, I have to say this for my wife. <coughs> she, that, that's usually not an issue with us. She comes up with something different a lot. And uh, so it, it, that, that's good. But when I was a boy, I got so burned out on beans and cornbread. I didn't think I'd ever want it again, but I actually like it. <laughs> but I got burned out on it. And, you know, a candy bar was pretty good every once in a while. And uh, Coca-Cola, stuff like that. And, uh, but you know what I found? They're not good for you. They taste good. And they fill an empty spot for a little while. But there, there's not much help in a Kit Kat, right? So we see that what the devil gives us is healing, but it's not beneficial. And so sometimes the shepherd will lead us to that same old sermon again and again. I wish Larry would come up with something new. Well, dear friend, I don't have anything new. And if you find someone with something new, you better put a question mark on them. And so he says, I am the good shepherd. I'm good at what I do. The good shepherd giveth life for his life for the sheep. And he did. You talk about particular redemption. Jared was talking about that this morning. He says, I gave my life for who? Not for all. I giveth my life for the sheep. Fairly easy to understand, is it not? And then we'll read this and we'll be done. But he 
that is a hireling. Now what is a hireling? First of all, it's pretty easy somebody to hire, but what are you hiring them to do? To protect your sheep, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I appreciate every the church, everything the church does for me and mine. But I've told you before, if you can't afford to pay me anything, I'll still be here as long as you want me. Because I never want to be marked as a hireling. Yeah. You know, the Primitive Baptist and, and the old regular Baptist both, they never have paid their pastor one dime because he would be considered a hireling. And we find here the problem, this is the chief problem of a hireling. He has no real love for the sheep. Each and every one of you, I have a concern. I have a love for you. Listen, I know y'all get to hear me blaring about separation, but I'm telling you, I do that because I love you. I, I, I see problems on the horizon. I say, hey, don't get into that. There's difficulty there. There's hardship there. There's heartbreak there. And don't do that to control people's life. I do it because I love you. Mm -hmm. Now, a hireling will not do that. A hireling will let you eat all the Kit Kats that you want. Right? And so we see then, as the Lord's people, that just hiring an eloquent speaker doesn't mean that you've got a good pastor. About halfway down in verse 12, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. Now, a good shepherd, when he sees the wolf coming, depending on how rapid the wolf's running that way, he'll do one or two things. He'll get him to safety, or he'll, he'll go after the wolf. One of the two. If there's enough time, he'll move him to protection. If there's not, he lays down his life for his sheep. See, Jesus did that for us. The great and wonderful shepherd, there was no way around it. Not only was the wolf already arrived, the wolf had already done horrible damage all the way back to uh, the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. It was a destructive thing. And so there was no choice but to lay down his life. For who? The sheep. And so we see then that the Lord uh, was uh, trying to make this as simple as he could understand, saying who he is. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I and am known of mine. Last verse we're going to read this morning. He says, my own know me. You don't have to go through dissertations on the beautiful grace of God. My own know him. They know me. Have you, have you, how many people have ever known someone that could not read? I met a couple people. And you know what? If they were saved, they didn't have to read, did they? Uh, I remember this very clearly. I was a young nurse. I worked at the little hospital in Paris. And I worked through to 11, and we did a lot of what's called pre-ops and get ready for their morning surgery. And I came in and I was explaining, you know, they're going to do this, they're going to do this. And I said, do you understand everything? And she goes, oh, yeah. I said, okay, can you sign for me? She looked real dim and said, son, I can't write. I've never been so embarrassed in all my life. But you know what? You don't have to read to be saved. I often wonder, and I should have asked her then, but I didn't, if she was a saved woman. Mm -hmm. Illiterate, but on their way to glory. See, I don't mind. I love, I love doctrinal statements. But see, I'd whole much rather someone that can't even write a word to tell me the goodness that God's did for them. 
And you know why? Because then I know they're a sheep. Mm -hmm. They didn't just read about Christ. They know Christ. They're a genuine sheep. And I believe in the day that we live, that's what we need. That, that, that should be our, not that they are five pointers, but that they know Christ. And there is a huge difference that you know Christ